Hey everybody, this is Anthony with you again from Biblical Truth and Reality. Welcome back to the next video in the series of refuting this once saved, always saved false doctrine. And this one's going to be about the classic passage, 1 Corinthians chapter number 3. Many claim that this is not about the great right throne judgment, but is only about the judgment seat of Christ, that there are different judgments. Not true. Let's go through these passages and have your Bible open and read along, okay? 1 Corinthians 3, verse number 10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another man buildeth thereon, but let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. Verses 11 and 12. For of the foundation can no man lay, than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble. Now it says if any man build upon this foundation. Now what foundation is that, you ask, Brother Anthony? See verse 11, which is Jesus Christ. Next, Matthew 7, 13 through 20. Now Christ is the gateway to heaven, right? Now false converts will try to get in another way. Beware of them. Bad fruit is cast into the fire. Now, what is 1 Corinthians chapter 3 about anyway? We will see as you cross-reference Scripture with Scripture. Okay? Good fruit tree is built upon Christ, but the bad fruit tree is cast into the fire. Now, on your own time, read verses 21 through 23 and 26 through 27. Those who don't build upon the foundation of Christ will be rejected by God. Let's quickly turn to Matthew chapter number 7. Verses 24 and 25. Therefore, whosoever heareth these things of mine and doeth them. How about that? Doeth them. Not say the sinner's prayer and have faith in Christ only. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the, that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. Now we know that the rock is Jesus Christ. So once again, those who do build upon the foundation of Christ will be accepted by God. Now back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 13-15. through 15. This is the result of a believer building upon Christ. Now nobody's perfect, obviously, but their works will be tried. Again, good works, good works consist of gold, silver, and precious stones, and bad works consist of wood, hay, and stubble. But real quickly, verses 14 and 15. If any man's work abide, which he hath built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. Hmm. Once again, see Matthew 5, 12. It says, Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. The question is, what's the reward that God will give us? We must be blessed. How? See Matthew 5, 3 through 11. He gives a whole list of things that you will be blessed if you do these things. Or blessed if you're in that situation or condition. Next, Matthew 16, 25 through 27. Now notice, you must give your whole life to God. That means losing it in this life if necessary. Every man will receive a reward by their works. Now, doesn't that sound familiar? Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Be sure to look that reference up. Quickly, see Colossians chapter 3. It talks about obeying authority as unto the Lord. Verses 23 through 25 are getting the reward in heaven by serving Christ. Results will be given by good or bad. Make sense? Next one is Revelation 22, 6 through 14. The last book and chapter of Scripture. It's about enduring and keeping His commandments. Now, of course, many want to say, well, this is only for those in the millennium, the millennial reign of Christ. Really? Then why does it say in verse 7 and 12, follow along, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man 
You know what the words every man mean, right? According as his work shall be. So then the whole book of Revelation should be discarded because supposedly it's not for us, right? Is that really what you think? Why would God be dumb enough to allow books like Hebrews and James and Revelation to be in the scripture canon if it's not for the church? Come on, go get your head examined, all right? <laughs> There's no way that God is going to be that deceitful and that crafty to allow three books into his canon, but then we can just discard them because they're not for us. That doesn't make any sense. Let's read verse 15 from 1 Corinthians chapter 3. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. In context, it's referring to those who have built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. In that case, it isn't a, about their soul being in jeopardy. Why? Well, <laughs> because they have endured unto the end, as Jesus Christ said. Also, they're dead by this time. Hmm. Therefore, they shall be judged according to their works as their service to Jesus Christ. Did you get that? Works. Again, see Revelation 20, 11 through 15. Let's read verses 16 through 18. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Let no man deceive himself, if any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world. Let him become a fool, that he may be wise. You mean to tell me that God will destroy us? Yes, he could, and will, if... We do not remain on the foundation we built upon, which is Christ. You see, that's where these once saved, always saved people want to get you. They look at that verse that says, saved by fire, and they say, we're eternally secured now in this life. That's not true. Don't let them fool you. It's not this motto, free grace ride, let the rules slide. All right? Matthew 10, verses 5 to 28. Jesus here is giving commandments to his own 12 disciples, the beginning of the New Testament instituted church. But notice in verse 28, And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. Two things I want to point out here. First, it doesn't say he will destroy you, your soul and body in hell. It just says he could. And he's able to destroy your body and soul in hell. Didn't say he would. Secondly, why would he tell them to fear God who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell if they have nothing to worry about and they are eternally secure? Hmm. Hmm. That sounds like a deceitful statement. Kind of like a scapegoat scare tactic from Jesus Christ himself. I know you're secure, but I'm just going to throw this out there anyway just to scare the pants off you. Really? Proverbs 13, 13. Whosoever despiseth the word shall be destroyed, but he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. Wow, okay, so the word rewarded appears here just as it appeared in 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Hmm. This chapter is not endorsing a once saved, always saved mindset, false doctrine in this life. It's in context referring to those who have built upon the foundation of Jesus Christ. Now, in that case, that would be an instant or situation of a truly once saved, always saved circumstance. Why? Because you're already dead by the time this judgment happens. It's not happening now in this life. Secondly, it's after the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. And it's at the end. So how can this prove a once saved, always saved in this lifetime if this judgment is going to be far away after death and after the millennial reign of Christ? 
Doesn't make sense. Even if, I'll even propose this to you, even if it is true that this is a totally separate judgment than the White Throne judgment, which isn't true, <laughs> it's quite ludicrous, even if that were the case, it's still after death, so doesn't show once saved, always saved. Here, does it? No. Love the Lord Jesus Christ. Have a great Sabbath tomorrow. Fear God and keep his commandments. And read and believe the King James Bible. Thanks.